This month commenced with a delightful week in and around Baxter State Park in Maine. Baxter is famous for housing the northern terminus of the Appalachian Trail, Mount Katahdin. While we were there, we hiked up Mount Katahdin via the Knife's Edge route, and although it was definitely nerve-wracking, we had perfectly blue skies and calm winds, and I felt strong enough to handle it with confidence after many months of consistent hiking. But Baxter is much more than just Katahdin. Even though it's a state park, it's managed more like a wilderness, and the focus of the park is to protect the natural landscape rather than cater to human visitors. Instead of huge throngs of people and resort-like amenities, there are over 200,000 acres of protected, fungi-filled forests, crystal clear lakes, marshy areas teeming with turtles and carnivorous plants like bladderwort, and streams that are perfect for splashing around in. Then, after four months of getting to know the Appalachian Mountains of the United States, we hopped in our car once again, which we've now officially named the truck, to drive across the border into the Canadian Appalachian Mountains. Contrary to popular belief, the Appalachian Mountains don't end with the Appalachian Trail. They continue north through Quebec and Newfoundland, and parts of the same range can even be found in Norway, Scotland, and several other countries. A trail called the International Appalachian Trail picks up where the AT ends and follows the mountain range through its entirety. After crossing the border, we drove for a few hours through the rolling hills and fertile fields of New Brunswick, then passed over a bridge into the French-speaking province of Quebec. Suddenly, everything felt different. Whereas in New Brunswick, the signs had been in both French and English, here they are exclusively in French. The Appalachians look different here too, dropping off abruptly into the St. Lawrence, a waterway so wide you can't see the other side, which gives this landscape a dramatic mountains-to-sea look. At first, all I could see were the differences. It was strange to see a new side of the Appalachians that I'd gotten to know so intimately this year. The Appalachians that I knew before were landlocked and far from the sea, both culturally and geographically. They were English-speaking and so American-feeling. But here, many of the towns are named after Catholic saints, and the cheese sections in the grocery stores are huge. When we arrived at the tiny fishing town where we would spend the next four weeks, Saint-Maxime de Mont-Louis, the first thing we noticed was a fish boutique. We speculated that maybe they sold designer-type fish, like the really rare and expensive kinds. But later we learned that boutique just means shop. The longer we were here, though, the more I began to see the similarities between this place and all the previous stops on our trip through the Appalachians. The plants, for one, are very similar. On my first hike here, I assumed that many of the plants would be new to me. But walking through an open field near a river hollow that cuts through the mountains and feeds into the sea, even the scent was familiar. Goldenrod, purple thistle, orange jewelweed, raspberries and tall grasses were made more aromatic in the August sun. It smelled exactly like the fields surrounding my childhood home in West Virginia in late summer. Birds sang as they hopped around in the sugar maples and serviceberry trees, and I recognized the familiar calls of song sparrows, chickadees, and cedar waxwings. It felt like home. My eyes were gradually opened to the similarities beyond the flora and fauna too. The guy in the grocery store wearing an Under Armour hoodie and work boots, the stacks of firewood and little vegetable gardens next to the small but well-maintained homes, the four-wheelers parked in many of the driveways, families out fishing for trout at the river on a Sunday afternoon. It seems like people here just love to be outside and nobody is in too big of a hurry. I came to the conclusion that rural Quebec feels like France meets West Virginia, a quirky but awesome combination. We spent every weekend camping this month, driving to nearby Parc National de Gaspésie and Parc National de Forillon so we could see the whole scope of landscapes that can be found here. Both parks are incredible with grand mountain views and diverse pockets of taiga, arctic tundra, brackish marshes, and old growth forest. In Forian, we were lucky to hike right past a massive, very chill moose who was munching on plants and didn't seem alarmed one bit at our presence. Forian borders the ocean, so we also got to observe a cormorant nesting colony with their big grassy nests perched vertically on sheer cliffs facing the sea. Cool tiny critters included pine siskins, voles, and mink frogs. In Gaspasi, we were able to hike into a protected alpine area where the last remaining caribou herd south of the St. Lawrence River is found. For those who don't know, caribou is the same species as a reindeer. We just use the word caribou in North America and reindeer in Europe. 
we got to watch a sweet caribou family munching on lichen and moss, their primary food sources. Another highlight in Gaspasi was sharing a trail during a rainstorm with a group of ruffed grouse who were feeding on bunchberries and didn't seem to mind that we were around. Later this week, we'll start a long travel marathon, driving 11 hours to the tip of Nova Scotia, catching an eight-hour ferry through the Atlantic, and then driving a few more hours up the coast of Newfoundland to arrive at our next and final destination. I hope you enjoyed this update. Stay tuned for the next one.